Hey, I just got a notification. We just bumped up the most people, like, immediately. <laughs> what the f- Maybe they had it unnotified. They're not updating fast enough on my uh, Hey. There we hey, are. Hey, we're here. Hey. Here. Oh, we finally we're not made dead. it. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> oh, it's been a fun morning already, hasn't it? <laughs> New streamer sure woes. <laughs> <laughs> How's everybody doing tonight? Hello, everybody. So, welcome to another fun and Exciting and in this case, crazy night of uh, <laughs> yes. adventures. So it's gonna be a little different than we normally do. Um, our wonderful Ethereum player Esifer has come up with this awesome presentation to explain the Garund and the Ethereans, which are two of the races that some of our players are playing during our uh, campaign, as well as some of the stranger races that we are seeing within the weirded world so i'm not going to talk much tonight which is a big difference i'm going <laughs> to give it off to esifer and also james and i are here <laughs> hey everyone um so out in the real world they call me pam but S. Zephyr is my character name, and we have one of our players out, so we decided to do a deep dive into the Ethereum and Garoon races with all our folks out here. Thank you to Gooey Cube for the use of their artwork. And um, Matt and James are going to be keeping an eye on the chat to make sure they, uh, we catch any questions that might come by. And uh, no heckling, please. <laughs> 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 so welcome to Zaya Fay. And we're gonna say that is how you say it, Zaya Fay. There's got that accent over the E. We're very confident that we like our accents and our apostrophes as we were just talking about in the background <laughs> as we were hanging out in the green room getting ready to start. So Zaya Fay is a rich and immersive world. It's 5e e compatible it's from Gooey Cube, and there are a cadre of contributors helping to build it, both from a writing standpoint as well as an artistical standpoint. And wow, there's a lot of great art here. We're going to start off with the author. So the Asphrenio are their proper names, but most people just call them the Ethereans. They were the children of the goddesses Glastria and Zypheria, um, Zypheria being the elemental goddess of wind. They're roughly as tall as humans. They have pale grayish purple skin and usually silvery white hair, though lots of them do actually add colorful colors to their hair. So you can see I'm a little bit Ethereum at heart. <laughs> Um, they're known to carry themselves with unparalleled grace and fluidity, and that sometimes even makes the elves a little jealous. They can be found mostly in eastern Estrania and on the southern shores of Abloom, but they also have their fabled sky cities, giant airships that go through the skies of Zyathe. Down to the technical details. So they do have some special abilities and attributes that you're not going to find in the other typical 5e races. They automatically get a plus one to dexterity and a plus two to wisdom. Their speed is 40 feet. 
because of the nature of their society, they are automatically disciplined and have a plus one to all saving throws. Not that it's helped me much in our games, <laughs> <laughs> because I don't roll very well. Um, they have special skills of haggle, which lets them do things like sell items for 10% more than they would normally get. So if you were normally to sell something that would get a base value of 50%, an Ethereum could sell that for 60%. Um, trade goods and valuables, you can get 105% of the typical value. They also have something called subtle speech. So their culture is very rigid and honor bound and very, very intricate. And growing up in this lets them know all the nuances and dictations of speech. So they're pretty good at that. The other thing that does is it gives them a boost to both their insight and persuasion skills. And they receive a plus two on those skills. Again, not something that I've had a lot of help from because Dice rollers just don't seem to like me. On this next screen, we're going to show you some of the wonderful artwork. So the upper right image is one of a wind weaver. And a wind weaver is special to Ethereans. So they have innate control over wind. And even the most rudimentary of them have the basic skills of being able to blow out candles, or um, ruffle winds and knock things, uh, light things over without touching it just by the use of their wind skill. Like you did like, when we were fighting those those uh, guards in the bar and you turned on all the lights. I turned yeah. out the lights so that our folks with dark vision could take advantage of it. I couldn't see anything, <laughs> but I was trying to stay far away from the altercations. Because again, I don't roll really well. <laughs> she did fine. So the Wind Weavers, their well. special sect, a lot of the Ethereum also, you know, to peoples of Zyathe, most of them will call an Ethereum the Wind Weaver, but it is a special sect within the Ethereum culture. And what these folks are known to do is they construct their sky ships. Um, and you can see a picture of a sky ship right here in the middle of the screen. It's a little bit like a blimp and a little bit not. Um, and they're very... Um, special ships they're very expensive to produce so outside of the Ethereans, no not very many people have these uh, nobility sometimes military so it's pretty rare to see these being piloted by anybody other than an Ethereum. and in the lower left corner is actually a class we haven't seen yet this is blood warrior and um, we're hoping to hear more about that but as our grand mad wizard likes to say quite a lot is that's a tale still to be in the telling and now we're going to move to the garoon and i am going to let our garoon talk about that decimus take it away all right so the the garoon um <clears throat> they are pretty much the race that is the the mountain men of Zayathe. They live in the, the high mountains um, and uh, their race has been created by the god uh, Graham Bayer who was uh, trying to find a, a suitable creation to live in the harsh climates of these high mountains. So um, along with that, we can go ahead and jump into a couple of these attributes that, that go along with that is um, nat uh, natural resonance, which um, <clears throat> I'm trying to find some of my notes here. Um, they have uh, the Garund, due to their rocky and crystalline bone structures, they have a beautiful singing voice, which gives them advantage on charisma checks um, involving performance. Uh, when they sing and they are also a uh, downside to this is vulnerable to thunder damage due to that that resonance in their their internal structure it can cause more damage to them <clears throat> then we also have the the lord of the mountains so they are able to uh, brave these cold climates um, up to altitudes of 20,000 feet 
and along with this for the player, they will have advantage on any checks needing to climb or move across mountainous, hilly, icy, or rocky terrains, which can come in very handy. Um, so they, they have a plus two in strength and a plus two in constitution, a uh, typical 30 feet of movement. Um, they have proficiency with heavy weapons. They have uh, tool proficiency, um, which they can take proficiency in uh, wood carver's tools, smith's tools, potter's tools, mason's tools, leather worker's tools, jewelry, uh, jeweler's tools, or carpenter's tools. So they're, they're very crafty uh, type people and they, they make good use of all the surroundings up in the mountains. And then last here they have uh, long memory, which they have proficiency in history checks. And um, there's also half Garoon's race, which is the one that I am playing. And the difference between the, <clears throat> the normal Garoon and the half Garoon is they are only able to mate with Arachanoids, which is more of the orcish type race in Zyathe. And um, some of the physical differences is they have protruding fangs, uh, pointed ears similar to orcs. Uh, they're a little bit shorter. Um, so typical Garoons are 8 to 9 feet tall, as to where the half Garoons are 7 to 8 feet tall. And they're much wider, stockier built. Uh, they have more bold, strong facial features. Um, the, their skin is a darker, more blue-green color and dark gray hair with red-orange eyes compared to the regular Garoon. Um, <coughs> uh, orange eyes. And a couple of the differences in, in um, the attributes and traits is that uh, they will lose natural resonance, long memory, and tool proficiency, but they will be gaining dark vision, relentless endurance, which normal orcs have, and um, roused to anger, which is a little bit new of a attribute, which if you get a critical strike while you're below half HP, you get to roll an extra weapon damage die which can come in very handy if you start getting a little bit low in combat. So the, the Garoon race is very different from what you would think as to where they're, they're very large, um, almost Goliath-like race, where they're kind of a little more aloof and, and very brutish. They're, they're more of a, of a refined, but still, um, still primal kind of people and they're very intelligent for sure they've always seemed like a really wise people to me they you know they yeah. have their own they kind of avoided when the woe of ruin happened they hadn't dabbled with as many of the higher circles of magic so they kind of avoided a lot of the, the devastation that happened then which was oh yeah just great for them <laughs> um and it was kind of fortunate for them too that it turned out that the other civilizations had kind of bullied them uh, to some of the less desirable terrain because those works from the the uh, Etherns weren't as prevalent in their lands, so they weren't as affected by all of the the corruption and stuff that happened. Oh yeah, I almost played a Goran, so I'm really I'm really into into the Goran right. lore. I think they're they're so much cooler than your normal like. Big oh, yeah. bad dumb guy that you yeah, get in I, a lot of a lot of settings. That's what really brought me to it is is I read their their lore and it is, it's great. There's a it lot is. of detail in there and it's completely different than what I figured it would be. Yeah, and the like the ritual of the stone moot where they, you know, meet once every so often and they mm -hmm. sing these beautiful songs and these stones that are in the center of their village resonate until the next stone moot. I mean that's. Yep. That's really unique and, and kind of beautiful to think about these gore. And I almost think that it sounds like, you know, that Tibetan throat singing mm -hmm. <laughs> that you hear. I almost picture it's something like that. You know, it's right. really cool. <clears throat> yeah, so it's kind of neat. Um, for anybody who's not dived deep into Zayate in the worded world, is that when these races are created, they're not created by one specific god. There's, there's 72 gods within the world, but... Each of these races were given 
a focused God who is like, this is how I want these the people to be created. But then they go and they do exactly what we do as a community. And you go talk to other people and they bring other gods of other things together. And that's how both the Garun and the Ethereans were kind of molded to the races that they are. Um, both of these... Both of these races have unique um, twists to them that you, unless you take a little bit of time to learn the background of the race's creation, it makes extreme sense of how they act the way they do. Um, the one thing with the Garoons, though, that uh, was, wasn't mentioned was the Garoons' timeline is way beyond what a, uh, a human or a uh, humani or a um, Ethereum, the, the Garoons live up to five to six hundred years where a um, normal human race or uh, the Ethereans both, they live around normal age of max of about a hundred. Uh, but that also makes it so that they take their time to make decisions and they're very um, they they dedicate a lot of time to make a strong decision rather than jumping into risk at a very fast pace. Um, yeah, so these are just two of the uh, the many, many races that uh, Zyothe offers to players and uh, people they'll run into, unique civilizations. It's it's going to be a crazy ride, and I'm just hoping you're all ready for it. So, Yes, Zane, that's right. Grim Bear was the primary god responsible for the Gorin. Yep. Um, but they are they are for sure an interesting race. And with the Ethereans, you know, the idea that they build these, uh, these airships, I mean, that's such a valuable commodity um, that's so unique to them. And, I, I, you know, we don't know a lot about their politics but i would imagine that some of these architects these wind weavers are you know would be kidnapped from time to time you know if somebody tries to like force them to build an airship <laughs> for them mm -hmm. um you know like a like a super fantasy nazi or something coming in and, and grabs yeah. them up to make some kind of like you know something you would see in uh <laughs> see in like uh castlevania or not castlevania um uh the the one with mecha hitler that game, you guys know what I'm talking about. In the world yeah. of tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. yeah Why not? Yeah. <laughs> or Doom. <laughs> Doom. That's the one I was thinking of. Doom oh, guy. Wolfenstein. <laughs> Wolfenstein. Yeah. That kind of thing. You know, I could see some really cool, like dread fortresses. <laughs> yeah. Flying. You know, it'd be really cool. Well, and that's also another thing the Ethereum have is they have entire cities that fly through the skies. Um, we haven't gotten any glimpses of them. They're pretty rare, but they are completely mobile cities that they can pretty much close up shop and, and move the entire city and then reset up in, mm -hmm. because, and they're so structured and everybody knows what they're doing that they can reset up their city yeah, fairly they're quickly. The, they're the so are they, you know that... Tear, it, and tear a barn down in two seconds and then build it back up two, 200 miles away. Like, right. you know, yeah, it's perfect. <clears throat> so it is, it is actually a, a mobile shop, despite what the wizard says. <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't like teleporting <laughs> shops. <laughs> well, you know, earlier today saying, no, no, there's no, you know, wandering shops. Well, yeah, actually there are, but they're yeah. all up in the sky and no one else mm -hmm. can get to them. <laughs> So, Pam, um, the mm -hmm. iconic image that we see on all of the, a lot of the Cyclopedia, Zyathica, and that kind of stuff is the um, the floating fortress, or the floating city that the Aetherns built. Was mm -hmm. that, is that the same sort of tech that the Aetherians use now, or was that different? Or do we know? We don't know. So it's we don't know yet. the telling. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I can see that being really cool. Like, maybe there's yeah. some lost Aetherian tech where mm -hmm. they were doing it in a different way before. Well, there's the one from that's out in the nether shade, um, but that's all um, a result of magic that went bad. Right. That's so all part of the woe, Ethereum, right? Yeah, it's all part of their, well, for the Ethereans, it's all part of their um, divine skill from the elemental goddess of air, 
Zephyr. Mm -hmm. And that was actually one of the things um, didn't touch on, like their naming conventions, uh, as you see in Zephyr's name, <coughs> the P, S, an apostrophe, and then a name. So, and that's um, for the females. Um, the male would be an E-N, and if it was someone who did not particularly follow either, it would be E-Z. Hmm. That's so interesting. They are also, they have, um, you know, they uh, admit to the, what do we call it? Not, not the duality, but... Non-binary. The, the non-binary, so the, the spectrum. So they're not saying, yes, you're going to be one or the other. And just a lot of the things I've seen, they're very, um, there's a lot of influence from, from what I'm reading of more like the Japanese culture. I can see I, that. I see that as well. I kind of thought the same way, especially when they said they, said they built upward and they, they could really construct um, mm -hmm. buildings and then destruct and then construct. And I was thinking very Korean uh, yeah. Or su subculture. And some of it just seems like very, you know, maybe uh, some influence like Bushido. Honor yeah. is very important to the Ethereans. Yeah. Well, and like Esifer doesn't actually use like a long sword or a short sword. You use a, a uh, an A. I think for a Tianpo. Yeah. Which is actually a Chinese sword, but. Right. <laughs> but it has that kind of and influence, right? Nice. It feels that way. Yeah. That yeah. feels right. So the other. Because a traditional broadsword was not going to work. No. Yeah. Um, the other unique thing about the Ethereans is that while the entirety of the world started to change due to all the destruction and the, the well of ruin, um, this took a lot of um, control away from a lot of the divine uh, a lot of the divine. So they were out doing divine, um, chaos control in all honesty and um, that's why the Ethereans have restructured almost to a point because they're given off to the law god uh, the god of law um, can't put a name to it right off the top of my head uh, at this moment but it's not Redian, is it? Is that, no, is that, is that the god no, of the sun? It starts with a C I think So um, vain. Yes. The Lightbringer. Yeah, so the Lightbringer, um, and that's where a lot of the structure comes from, where normally they're very, very flowy. It would be the best way Chaotic. to put it. Chaotic. Chaotic yeah. neutral. <laughs> fluid. Yeah, fluid. <laughs> um, and they're very nomadic, but in a different way. I almost could see them at one point being much like... Um, a Romani or the uh, Mongols, the Mongols. Yeah. Where once they get the, the structure put into them um, and this kind of the neat part about it is that both you can then utilize both sides of it and state that either they're coming from their original form or they're coming from a norm that they're used to. And it allows them to really give a two sides to the coin type race which i think is very unique to that specific race kind of have some like air nomads from avatar the last airbender <laughs> vibes to it as well you know um that kind of thing i don't know <laughs> um, and the one thing we're not touching on tonight but i do want to kind of touch on since we're in the conversation of our our party specifically tonight and the two races that they're playing each one of them is has a blood touch which is a which is a magical connection to the Zyanthus or the Everflow, um, which is where magic comes from. And these aren't just sorcerers and wizards, but there's actually something deeper, something that seems to get to the root of a player or of a character. Um, and it's it started out rare. It started to be very uncommon. But as the Wool of Ruin had happened and as continues to grow, um, they're seeing more and more now, our entire party is based on what they call the Hanataz, which all or mostly all of those players will be somewhat connected to the Blood Touch, either through a generational connection or through being given 
to the Hanatas, um, and that's where these troops are. And this troop that you're working, that we're going to be living through the stream, is going to be called the Silver Thread uh, Troop. And um, we utilize that as a way to um, give a little bit of something that Gooey Cube has really put a ton of time, effort, and energy into. Um, and if you haven't already checked out the Red Rising campaign, um, it's where it first was seen, and it's a beautiful campaign. Um, you'll notice a lot of the pre-gens are players that we're playing around with as NPCs for this, and uh, they're just a lot of fun characters that they put into it. Um, well, and I it's, definitely it's... just want to give that shout-out to Gooey Cube for just coming up with this concept in general that... Uh, most people kind of stare away from with the carnivals and everybody being evil when you're at, I mean, you think about it, you think of clowns, you think of dangerous, messed up people, but really when it comes down to it, they're still just people. Yeah. Um, and we kind of want to give that same feel to it that uh, they, they originally philosophized. And it gives us a commonality is another thing. If you're a player, a lot of times in a, in an D and D adventure, you meet in an inn, you meet at a bar, right? Um, with especially Red Star Rising, or if you're playing a homebrew like we are, where we're um, Hanatas, it gives us something that binds us, the shared trauma of people persecuting us or looking down on us or treating us as freaks, objectifying. Yeah. Um, because, you know, in, in some places we're treated as curiosities, but in most places we're treated as tainted evil beings. And so we have this kind of commonality, like um, Dell is... Uh, air touched and i think he know he has that that touch inside of him where the wind you know flows through him and he's very much at in touch with that and i think you know that's why he feels almost a kinship with esifer because as an ethereum she's also um very prone to being kind of at the winds of where the breeze takes her and, and able to adapt and, and change with new changing situations and so that gives Esifer and Dell something to connect to um, and work from when we're writing these backstories and just, you know, something besides just random chance that brought us together. Um, and I think that's great. I think that's something that a lot of systems are missing. And it makes your life as a DM a little bit uh, easier, too, to try to, why do you have, why do you have the necromancer evil, <laughs> you know, whatever in the same party as you have this paladin who's dedicated themselves to being a lawful good like paragon of virtue well they shared this same we have to work together to survive or to keep from being exterminated um you know you can very much get that kind of thing going on which is great yeah and in the same vein so as Zephyr, her blood touch is earth-based which means she then has that connection with decimus being part of half or on yeah so it does it gives us all a big uh, connection um if she had been air touched she probably wouldn't be here because an uh, air touch to an ethereum wouldn't be any different than what they already have her blood touch though is manifested in what appears to be tattoo a tattoo like thing but it keeps growing and the Ethereum really look down on tattoos. It's just body modification is just something that is not done. It's not very aesthetic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also think it's interesting that with the Ethereans, we have like almost this elf like race. But within the world of Zyathe, you know, in, in most fantasy lore, you have the elves or these elder beings who. Um, kind of pave the way and it's becoming the age of man whereas in Zyathe, the home of Neri, which are the humans are actually the elder race um they've been around longer um a lot of the civilization was built um by the hum by the home of i think specifically in Zyathe, it's actually weirdly or not Zyathe, but in um west verdestia i think it was originally halfling in the Zy the Zyrathi republic is that right it was originally yep. founded by halflings and softlings, which yep. is kind of odd. I mean, what if just in Lord of the Rings, what if uh, instead of Gondor, you had 
Hobbiton, you know? <laughs> it's kind of a unique a unique thing. Sire was very big. <laughs> Sire was people were I'm sorry, but in, in Middle Earth, why is everybody not living in the Shire? It seems like the Hobbits have got it going on. <laughs> Yeah. Kind of about, it, it's kind of funny you, you say that with the, with the hobbits and stuff is that the um they're kind of out in their own own thing and uh, one thing that um philosophy behind gooey cube is kind of to give everything its own originality and its own yeah. spot in the world um and i think that's kind of what they've done very well is they've given these areas these unique connections to each other where once we start jumping on sky ships or my room uh vessels or heaven forbid a teleporting shop that will never exist in our stream <laughs> this is all for you you know who you are it's not that they can't yeah. exist there just can't be a hundred of them yes exactly <laughs> Um, or maybe they all exploded when the woe of ruin happened. Ah, they turned into right. a teleporting strip mall. <laughs> <laughs> in some demi plane somewhere in in. They're out in the nether shade. No right. one wants to go there anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, and I think it's unique that the the concept is is that where we're at right now is very commonality to uh, the U.S. and. Europe and stuff like that, Europe, where we yeah. understand that. But as we start to dive into other areas, um, I'm really excited to see what what feel things change. Because uh, for me, I've only lived in so many countries in the world. And when you go to those countries, the feel is different. The, the atmosphere is different. The people are much different. And um, to bring a game to life that feels that way and that understands that type of deepness. Um, it's definitely going to be a unique connection that you don't see a lot in D and D. And I really am excited for what's going to, what this stream and what gooey cube and the other people who are digging deep into the, the world are actually going to come up with because I'm pretty, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And we'll be kind of right there on the front lines as blood touch because oh, yeah. it seems like that's a that's a that's a, a an issue in every country is what do we do with these blood touch you know yep. I mean because common conception is that the blood touch just started appearing after the woe of ruin which is this near earth ending apocalyptic um, event and so people think that the blood touch are a byproduct of that and should be feared um, hated. And, you know, we're just trying to live our lives. I mean, Dell's just a musician, you know, trying to stay out of trouble and do his thing. Um, you know, <laughs> trying to stay out of trouble. Yeah. yeah. Trying to, like, I collect, collect <laughs> cool instruments. Dell is really supposed to be kind of just like, I'm going to go with the flow, see what happens. Because with Agents of Jinx, that's kind of what they do. They do what they need to do, then they shed their skin, and then they move on to the next thing. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, very much kind of get the job done and then get out. Yeah, so the next thing we'll Dale definitely want to do... runs into problems. <laughs> oh, yeah. But the next thing we'll definitely want to do is, is once we... If we ever run into this point where some of our players are out, because really we do want to hold this um, as a game first. And that means that if our players are not around, I don't want to just run the game. I want to make sure that our players are having the fun that they're having first. And then, of course, all of you... I hope you enjoy our antics and craziness, but uh, they are my concern as a, gu a dungeon master to make sure that they're having fun. Um, so the next one, we will definitely be doing a deep dive in. And this could happen on a Sunday that we don't have everybody, or this could just be another random stream that we pop out, um, is we need to go through the two unique classes that our players are playing as well, which is the Agent of Jinx and the Spell Dancer, which both of these are... The Agent of Jinx is a very unique version of the Rogue, and it has some really cool changes to it. In my kind opinion, of a rogue though, part. the the Spell Dancer is just out of the ordinary oh, yeah. in every way, <laughs> and it's fantastically created um, and balanced. But uh, there's nothing. Oh, really James, have you read my compare. have you read my Tools of the Trade yet? <laughs> I haven't yet. No. I'm still... Oh. 
just um, don't. <laughs> don't worry about those. <laughs> I definitely can't just like oh, knock weapons God. out of hands and stun things forever. <laughs> oh. Oh, so no, you're not a... James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now you're a bard rogue monk. I also get spell slots later, so that'll be fun. Oh, I bet. Yeah. So, Dell uh, discovers magic. That'll be a great episode <laughs> title. Burning <laughs> hands is great. Yeah. <laughs> Decimus, look what I can do. <laughs> Decimus, where'd your hair go? Yeah. <laughs> Send it oh, off man. his eyebrows. You did. <laughs> like when you discover you can do magic, it's like a sorcerer or something. Are you just like hanging out one day and you like throw a baseball and a fireball comes out or you know it's, it's got to be disturbing when you first find out about it yeah so that's something we definitely are going to have fun with because um we want each of you as players to kind of uh create your own customized uh feeling of how your spells are released what what they look like how they're changing um especially as you guys grow because i guarantee a uh, first level um scorching ray or something that's that's a cantrip of some site it's going to look one way now and but then as the story extends and stuff that it's going to slowly start to change and manipulate and take its own form to be something that you are excited to cast and you, you gives you a little bit of a a uniqueness to it compared to just pew pew, pew. yeah <laughs> <laughs> And maybe that's just me as the storyteller uh, mentality, but it's always fun to see players take their characters and take what's given to them in the law of the books um, and then start to really manipulate them with with words and with the way they utilize them compared to how it's it's said to use it. Um, and I think that's, that's always the fun as a DM to... Uh, have to first off you have to counter that somehow because some of this stuff can get crazy um but you we never also know what we'll come up with yeah, yeah. <laughs> the great uh the great karis story is uh oh, is a <laughs> uh, but that's something i want to do as a, as a dungeon master is put you guys on the spot for things too so that um it's reactionary or it's organic and it's more fun to build those memories and those stories because uh something i've always told people is is that you can build memories you can build emotion you can build um history in a game that feels reacts and literally connects you the same way you would as if we were standing side by side talking about real life um and as a DM, if I'm not doing that, then I'm not doing my job because uh, the goal is to use these stories for your kids or for conversation around a dinner table one time. And it's hilarious to hear people talk like this because this is what brings us together as a group. And most of us have never met in real life, which is fantastic that this community has allowed us to do this. So um, I'm going to get off my soapbox for a minute. I'm going to let the rest <laughs> of y'all talk for a little bit. Cool, James. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anybody have any questions? Anybody? Anything at all? I don't see anything new. Oh, yeah. I don't want to harp on this, but I am okay. going to mention it because we haven't done it in the past. Do if it? you're in our chat and you enjoy watching us, maybe toss us a follow so you'll know when we go live. Um, we're about to hit affiliate status, which is really cool. Um, and that'll let us do some new neat stuff for you guys. Um, maybe improve the quality of the stream so we're easier to look at because we're not great to look at as it is. But uh, we'll we'll try to do some fun new stuff, get some art for you guys, uh, maybe some emotes, that kind of stuff. Um, going in the in the future, a Karis the Great emote maybe or something. Right. But, um, <laughs> but if you guys could, if you guys could toss us a follow if you haven't already, which I know a lot of you have, uh, that we would appreciate that immensely. Yes, we definitely need an emote for Karis the st storyteller. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a picture of just a picture of Karis with a little bubble on his head, or <laughs> Karis with a beer in his hand, you know. <laughs> or just a just his book and it just says Radiance because that's how he does Word of Radiance. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I must say that I'm definitely gonna humble myself on this, but each of you have come up with it took time, energy, and outside of our stream to come up with your backstories and they're all extremely unique and we I can't wait to start seeing them kind of piece themselves together as we, we walk through this this fun game that we are enjoying. Yeah, and I hope you guys will start to see some of that at some point. Like uh, Pam and I have a document that um, we go back and forth on that I'm really bad about mm-hmm. updating, but she's really good about updating where we're kind of <laughs> Discussing how Esifer and, and Dell get to know each other because Dell's been with the uh, the troop for a few years. Yep. Uh, Esifer has as well, but not quite as not quite as far. Um, and I know that uh, Decimus, you and Karis have one of those as well. Yes. And then we're talking about rolling those into each other and kind of having them where we're going. So there is some. It's not just us being silly all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> we really do have some some deep meaningful conversations between us and there's some real um emotional investment between our characters into each other um just because of some of the things that we've been through together um so yeah and hopefully that will come out soon when we stop failing all of our tools that we make (laughs) and we start doing some cool stuff instead of just kind of flailing around in a dungeon with a bunch of zombie babies like i said burning hands was great (laughs) oh yeah it helped a lot (laughs) so for any of our followers, um, anybody in the stream right now, something I do have a question of is if we gave you options to help manipulate or choices on coming up with ways to help us or as a community grow and uh, collaborate, what would be ideas that you would have to help uh, or that you would want to be able to influence the story like for instance i know james we talked about maybe doing a survey a straw poll or something Mm -hmm. that we dropped in chat that you guys can like vote on what terrible thing james throws at us next week or um (laughs) you know yeah you know weird random lessons from the heart foxes But, you know, just, just stuff like that. If there's other stuff that you guys yeah. would like to be involved in, we could do that too. Uh, yeah. I think it would be really cool. Hey, like, I think that's something that we can bring as a growing stream <clears throat> that we want to make sure that doesn't just fall off the face of the earth once. Yeah. If, if let me rephrase that, if we we grow. Um, yeah. But, yeah, uh, we will. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll get there. We've got some great people like Twelfth Tone in there. Twelfth Tone, Twelfth Tone loves us. He'll be right. All right. right? Guys, <laughs> Bring your friends, please. <laughs> <laughs> and we will. Uh, um, we other thing we're looking at doing is is definitely and this is no. If this is going to affect anybody, please do not subscribe. But if you have tw- if you have Twitch Prime or you want to give us a couple bucks here and there. Um, we are going to start doing raffles on guest appearances for for our community, and um, people. We're going to buy James a chair. <laughs> <laughs> he really, really needs a chair. He really do and a chair. James needs a chair, guys. Yeah, he does. <laughs> Help us, please. But can no, we do no. one of the, Can we do one of those Sarah McLaughlin <laughs> videos with you and like looking at a chair? <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> we really do have a lot of fun with this, and we really want to have a good time, but we also want to include as many of you and as many of our GUI community as possible because uh, without them and without you, we couldn't do this fully. We would Yeah, we want this to be our adventure. Mm-hmm. And it would be our adventure, and we really want it to be a community adventure. Um, yep. And I'm going to try yeah. to allow people to come up with as much as possible on these NPCs and these special characters coming in. Mm-hmm. And mostly it's going to be a onesie twosie. Maybe you're going to go for one session or two sessions, depending on the story. Um, but just to bring your, 
your experience into the game and if you're comfortable getting behind the camera. And of course, we'll have to do a little bit of an um, an interview just to make sure that you'll work with the players and stuff. Um, we currently do not have PC portraits yet. Um, they that might be coming. costs because mm -hmm. we want to keep the GUI cube uh, mentality and we want to keep the quality that GUI cube offers. Um, those portraits are not cheap. Um, yeah. And <laughs> any money coming to the stream will definitely be going back to the stream 100%. Yeah. Um, Although, if, if any of you guys are talented artists and you would like to do <laughs> something, we would probably find oh, somewhere to put them, like oh on our God, Facebook yeah. or Twitter <laughs> or something like that. Uh, yeah, and you will watch. It's like a stick picture. Slap <laughs> Even just the ground yeah. because I would right. be amazed to see any of our stories or our players built into this uh into their own artwork because that is just an honor that um never goes unappreciated because we know that you guys just, put so much time and effort into artwork that uh, i want to see a stick figure drawing of decimus like flattening <laughs> that guy's head dude right <laughs> he'll get on flash guy. on it he'll get on that flash twice now. Okay, uh... he just keeps doing it yeah i know please don't kill him all right <laughs> <laughs> it's unintentional. It's just every time I just get a really good hit in. And I believe <laughs> Jay said, "Are you doing subdual damage?" And you went, "No." <laughs> <laughs> hey, players will be players. I just, I just react. We're it gonna end up with bounties everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you guys already will end up with bounties just on the fact that you're haunted cause, but the fact well, that you're yeah. going around and killing people on top of it now that is a uh, that's gonna be a different oops concept. Well, some of you all are intend, doing it. You know, sometimes you intend to just knock someone out with a hammer, and other times you just bash their skull in. You know, that's a <laughs> it's an honest mistake. <laughs> that's a significant difference in exertion. Oh, well, you know, just... <laughs> he got a little excited. He did. He, did. he got really excited. Really <laughs> it was a big day. <laughs> oh man! There was a lot of questions? emotion going on there. Oh yeah. yeah does anybody have <laughs> about the last couple of sessions? Uh, any of the players? Um, we have most of our players. We're just missing one tonight, but yes. uh, and I can definitely talk on his character a little bit. But otherwise, I'll just let him talk the next time he's on. Um, to make stuff up. Yeah, right? No, I, I, I'm i going straight off of his backstory if I do anything. So. Yeah. <laughs> storyteller. <laughs> yeah, great, great storyteller. Love to drink. That's about all you yep. need to know about him right now. <laughs> yeah. He was very upset about his keg being broken. I'm kind of the well, same way. Likes beer. Yeah, I didn't play cool. that right. I put Dale's character flaw as he can't resist ale. And... Ooh. I need, need to, to start erase that one and go back to the drawing board. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, do that. I had to go talk to that guy about his custom wine cup. We already... <laughs> Maybe that's Dell's flaw. Is he's like a Seinfeld character. He has to, like, if there's something that's, like, oh, minute... I'm a wine connoisseur. Bothers... <laughs> no, just something that's minute and innate that bothers him. He has to go figure it out. Like, he can't leave it alone. <laughs> I'll have to remember that as a DM, because you're going to put me in all sorts of weird conversations. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, and a sefer yeah. can only do so much. <laughs> <Dale. laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. We we've got we've got the whole bunch here. We've got the the one dude that picks out random random things for no reason. We've got the <laughs> mom of the group. We've got the drunk with a uh, temper t issue, and then we got the drunk that tells stories. <laughs> we just got I it like all. I like to think that Dell notices small details because he was trained as a spy. So, like, he yeah. sees little inconsistencies. He's like, what the hell is that? <laughs> well, not a very good spy if he's going to go up and ass straight up. <laughs> <laughs> he's gauging for their reactions. And Decimus with his breathtaking anger management issues. <laughs> He was trying to be a therapist there for a minute. It was funny. I laughed. Hey, I I tried. Sometimes someone just needs their face beat in. 
Yeah, I don't know if you were trying to be a therapist as much as just been like, stop. <laughs> as to effect a rescue. <laughs> My dad called it coaching. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, it was for a good reason, you know. We 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 did the important thing. Man, I can't help but feel like, and this is. I guess we can talk about this a little more. We have these conversations after the stream. I can't help but feel like that guy is not, he's dealing with some stuff too. And maybe there's more <laughs> going on with him than we know about. And like, I, I mean, he's, he's a, bad, he's a bad dude, right? Because he's the way he's treating his wife, yeah. but maybe there's something else going on. Um, you mean besides you know, the demon spawn in the church? The demon, the demon spawn. We assume Apparently it's some he sort know of thing. about it though. The zombie babies. Uh, I mean, whatever she's dealing with is not good. I mean, you don't just have zombie babies living where you live. Yeah. You know, or live in a knife. Like, nobody lives in a knife that's up mm -hmm. to good stuff. Apparently someone does. No, but we don't know that he's up to good stuff. Like, he may no. be up to bad stuff. Hello, deity. <laughs> um, but he's definitely not... He's definitely, to me, at best neutral, the man that lives in that knife. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got the knife? Does Garrus have the knife? Yeah, he grabs the, the knife. knife. Yeah, he's the only one that saw the man in the knife. I don't... Hey, I don't at least know someone if... else is seeing apparitions this time. Uh, that's true. <laughs> yeah, and it's not just you and I hearing tiny babies screaming despair. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and that was grim. <laughs> <laughs> the, the zombie babies were grim. Yeah, no, uh, they were away. a little rough, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just not okay. <laughs> it's what it comes Speaking down to. I Jacob, I, a few of those had to go splat. that was going to go down if it happened. Man. And then they all ended up in the fireplace, which was okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> probably where they needed to go. Like, I would have <laughs> liked to bury them, but... I mean, we assume those are the townspeople's children that this demon man did something to, but maybe they're... The maybe somebody said earlier... I saw a, a Twelfth Tone said, are they zombie babies or baby zombies? Maybe in this area of Zyathe, babies or zombies are born and they have to grow up. You know? Hey, you never know. Probably not. But I might be thinking a little too far into it, but anything's possible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Karis's Karis's religious tome is just a Book of, jokes. book of stories <laughs> like the Mad Lib. yeah i gave him a heavy book and he was like yeah this works so <laughs> right i think he just i think just whatever the biggest book he can find is is what he so, uses funny enough yeah. and i don't know if it's come out yet but he is actually his character sheet shows it um karis is a cleric of canundrus the mad yeah. god mm. so you can That's kind it. of see where some of the connections <laughs> were quick I like to think that he's like he originally had a holy book, but he just like as he finds yeah. bigger books, he takes the like the icon off of his old book and just swaps it out. <laughs> I'm picturing those guys in Holy Grail, oh, <laughs> except he's grabbing other people with it instead of himself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, he's beating people with Lords of Radiance. Yeah. <laughs> Roll. That actually brings up a funny thing that I've done in another campaign um, is that I played a orc wizard who thought he knew magic. <laughs> really just had a gun? No, no, he had all the random stuff in a bag that he would do. So, like, if he had to do, um, like, uh, like, firebolt, he would just light a piece of paper on fire and throw it at him. <laughs> or, like, uh, Molotov. <laughs> some creature, he'd just pull a chicken out of a bag and throw it at him, or something like that. <laughs> That's funny. It's hysterical. Power word death. Power word right. death. He just stabs him. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Power word death. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was. A, it was. a great character to play. Um, uh, my, yeah. He... My, my yes, Larper. <laughs> yeah, he's just got spell packets that he's throwing at people. <laughs> I forget oh, one of so one of it was funny because he was like, I think it was Prestidigitation, and it was like, so you would just watch him walk around and just slam doors shit like windows shut, and then <laughs> back to the spot and just stand there oh. like nothing could happen. 
Tom and Virginia. Yeah, oh, and the God. idea everybody starts watching to do it, and they're like. <laughs> I don't know. We've got lots oh, of cool funny. plans, and oh, yeah. and I mean, we're probably going to be doing this regardless of what happens. So, if you guys enjoy it, just stick around. We'll yep. we'll be here until somebody like until like Daddy Bezos comes and tells us we can't stream on Twitch anymore. I guess. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Either him or the, the the Mad Wizard comes in and goes, "Stop ruining my stuff." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But no, we really do appreciate everybody um, when you guys come out and have fun and laugh with us uh, because that's really what we're here for is to make everybody have a good time, make sure the players are having a great time. Um, and we want to make this as community-based as we can. So we're going to keep trying to come up with ways to incorporate as many people as we can in each of our adventures Um we don't know how long this adventure is going to go specifically with this group, but uh, <laughs> uh, we'll we'll see where the where the wind let, we'll see where the wind takes us. So. But I'm already designing. Avoid Zelandia. Yeah, I'm already designing Dell T-shirts, so I've got to keep this character. Around. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you realize when you and wear the jester hat too. <laughs> Yeah, mini figs. I don't yeah, even have character art for him, but I'm designing he died the next episode. Like that's just how this works. We'll, we'll yeah. have our own Funko Pops, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Hilarious. We're gonna laugh about all this, and then somehow in some weird, weirded world that we live in, and we're gonna go to a con, and somebody's gonna have created these things for us, and we're just gonna yeah. all go, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way on critical role like it, that's a big deal if they kill a yeah. character there because there's like actual like invested merch like yeah, it's, a, yeah. it's a big deal yeah. here it's like you're gonna see i don't think you're gonna see characters <laughs> dying as consistently but they don't ever kill off main characters other more than once or twice i don't know but james I'm if you're gonna if, if you've got some tpks in the work like now's the time <laughs> well, walk into an area, like, like i said i don't i don't completely sugarcoat my game so y'all walk into an area that you weren't supposed to walk no, but, into. you know you could always come back as the scungers <laughs> yeah that's true, that's true. That's that's true. true. whole game we just scundrews crawling out of the the shade and then yeah we just only go to the shade and gloom <laughs> or the vile desolation that's right deity we just no. only play in the vile desolation no that's the fazood no, the Chardonnay. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Chardonnay. Yeah, you're right. You, you're right. Fazood are pretty cool, too, though. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, which, the, depending on, like I said, depending on the direction that we go within uh, the Republic, there's a possibility that you guys will get close to the, the Vile Desolation, or we hop on a ship and we head up to Magdranog with the Arachanoids, or we head mm -hmm. south towards Invala. Um, I know a pirate. Yeah. <laughs> Decimus, hear me out. <laughs> Personality that night. Decimus, you're you're already like, you're already like half two things, right? <laughs> what if you could add a third thing to that thing list of things that you are <laughs> as a fazood? How attached to who, to your nose are you? <laughs> that's, uh, that's I think one of those is very important. <laughs> one, well, I mean, not to a fazood. <laughs> They don't need them. Why would you can still drink your ale? What's the problem? They evolved I past guess. noses. Yeah. I mean, I you smell have things. Have to swear you <laughs> so having swear use of my to, nose uh, would be pretty important. I've yeah, smelt blood and water and stuff so yeah. far. I, I'm pretty sure you tasted that vial. You'll never I have to both. smell stale beer again. <laughs> I don't know. Can Fazood smell? Somebody ask Alexander. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, he might respond in Belter talk. <laughs> Alexander knows if they can smell. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Who aren't in part of the GUI Cube community, um, Esper, if you want to pop up the, the Discord channel or the uh, the Facebook, I guess we go to Facebook instead of Discord on that. Um, 
for anybody who's yeah. interested or who really wants to dive into the world of Zyothe with us. Um, hey, the look. There's another shout out on there too for Jane's yeah. DM service. I'm Did circling it with my mouse, but you guys can't see that. Not a professional <laughs> DM, but we don't believe him. <laughs> Circle it with your mouse, Pam. <laughs> Way up here. Now, if you receive a DM, reach out to James. Yep. So if you do enjoy our stream or you are a group of people who the Dungeon Master is a guy who just got picked on it because he was the one that wanted to start the game. Um, the uh, Those are the types of groups that I'm really focusing on because those are the ones that really want to play. Um, they want a good story. They want to have fun. Um, and they've already got kind of this commonality. I'm happy to put groups together, but it's so much more simple and so much more fun for the players when you already know people there. Uh, we can, I have, um, I have the ability to run full homebrew games. I also do all D and D modules as well as our GUI modules, which I have all of those too, as of right now. Um, so if you are interested, please email me directly at DM Grumpy Dwarf um, and I will get back to you with pricing and details and we will put your story together to make you feel like the hero just like these fools. So, <laughs> But don't take him from us because he's Del's the only fool here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can't play on Sundays. So no playing on Sundays. Try to, we can try to squeeze it in. Mm -hmm. um, and I only play late nights due to goblin obligations. But um, Goblin hurting. Yep, goblin hurting. It is a thing. For anybody who has goblins, you understand what I'm talking about. For anybody who doesn't know what a goblin is, it's a little child. Um, <laughs> you love them, but there is a difference between the love of a goblin and the love of a pet. Goblins are different because <laughs> they're much more fun, but they are much more chaotic. Yeah. This is getting weird now, talking about them as, as, as goblins. <laughs> I, I call my kids goblins all the time. They love it. Um, so... And I, I know there are other people in here who know what goblins are, so, yep. So. And because he didn't finish his email address, it's dmgrumpydwarf at gmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely right. You, you kind of have to have that last part so you know yeah. where to send it. Yes. Um, and we're also going to recognize our, our folks at Gooey Coop for letting us do this and mm -hmm. letting us use all the, this great artwork and lots of support from them. And all of their artwork is definitely specific to them and copyrighted by Gooey Cube. Um, yep. And we're all part of the cult of Goo. <laughs> For sure. Yep. Uh, is that... Yep, yeah. one more. Yeah, one more. Yeah, yeah. and so, you know, as the, the, the fellas have said, you know, give us a follow. If you want to find us elsewhere, we've got a Facebook page. Tabletop Misfits stream over on Facebook, or if you just do a search for Tabletop Misfits, you should be able to find us. Our logo is pretty um, identifiable there. We're also out on Twitter at with the at Tabletop Misfit One, and here, of course, on Twitch. And we I love that we linked our Twitch <laughs> while we're on the Twitch. Yeah, well. <laughs> Well, it'll be on YouTube, too. It'll be yeah, on your YouTube. Step over on YouTube as well. Yeah, right. so for our YouTube folks, you can come find us on Twitch. Yep. I don't know how you found us on YouTube without finding us on Twitch, but if you did, we love you. You yep. can come here. <laughs> or vice versa. <laughs> Does anybody have yeah, I don't know how you would know how to get here. Let me order anything they'd want to know about. How would I know how to What size do... shoe does Decimus wear? That's a great question. I, I'd only assume it'd be pretty close to Yao Ming. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe he's got tiny feet. <clears throat> uh, I mean, I actually don't wear shoes. I, I just have uh, just basic cloth wraps. Yeah. So he's essentially barefoot. Yeah. Now yeah. you know. That's canon. Now. It is. Right I that is actually in my information that I sent to uh, our our wonderful DM here. 
<laughs> it's in my character's appearance. Yep. Oh, I love having fun like this. This makes my my weekend so much more enjoyable. Hey, hey look who's there. Even the wizard, the wizard says wizard no shoes. <laughs> Where's our mad grand wizard? <laughs> It's great that he got here after we got done destroying the lore of yeah, like right. yelling everything wrong <laughs> and, like, <laughs> just making stuff up. So he can give us nice, yeah. nice credit and uh, discredit. One of the two. Oh, man. Sure, Ethereans <laughs> can fly. They don't need. <laughs> yeah, it's canon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever you want. <laughs> Power over the wind. Yeah. <laughs> Hathcorns can pick up entire mountains. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we try. <laughs> That's true. But no, seriously, yeah. if you guys haven't already checked out Gooey Cube, which I think most of you have, if not, the Discord is a great place to be. Um, and there's some there's some cool stuff going on in there all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and if you ever want to run a game of Gooey Cube and try it out check us out. We've always got a convention or two on the schedule where you can come play a game um, and have a good time. And I'll probably be DMing one of them. So <laughs> We're racing all of Zyathe. I don't know if that's for Alphinius or for us. Um, I, pick one? I, I There's ones I don't know about yeah. yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's tough. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I really like the Gorn, but I also like the Fazood because they've got some weird, cool stuff going over there. There's there's a lot of races that I don't know about yet because I haven't read through some things and I'm not in some of the chats that you guys are for stuff that's not in books yet. <laughs> oh, but... I should probably say Algidian, shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm writing those guys. <laughs> but, you know, I, I do have a little bit of an affinity for my rune. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not oh, just... softlings are great too. Mm, yeah. <laughs> um, I do really like yeah. the lore for the Garoon, though. It's it is. There's it's... so much different than just yeah. your normal big race of just you know like strong dum dums. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't, you don't have that with the Garoon. Kind of, <clears throat> they take a a very unique spin mm -hmm. on Goliath and. Herbog and kind of put yeah. them together and then twist them a little bit more. Um, I know it's I know it's not exactly the same, but the uh, if you ever read Wheel of Time, the the uh, I can't remember it. the name of the race. Yes, um, the the people that make the the big stone stuff, um, they right. have that kind of deep wisdom that's mm -hmm. this big, you know, this thing that they know that <clears throat> the other races know, but they're not haughty about it you know they're just yeah they're just very wise and and they think things through mm -hmm. and i really like that about them uh, i don't know if i have and I, this is definitely just my bias on being able to play through as uh as an, a non-canon player um in one of our writings but i have this just i wouldn't say addiction but i have this like drive to want to know more about these Lords of Corruption and yeah. the character that's been designed behind it too. So uh Danger lies that way though. That's how um uh the name I can't yeah. think of it. What you asked for. Gaussian Thras. Uh yeah. he started down the the path of knowledge about these Lords of Corruption and it led to the Woe of Ruin. Yep. Those Lords of Corruption, they're real bad. They are real bad. Real, real bad. But a vote for Jinx is always a good vote because Jinx only <laughs> wants the best for you. <laughs> he's like those Sour Patch kids, you know, first he's sour right. and then he's sweet. Like, he'll trip you, but then he'll, like, you'll find a cool penny when you're down there, I guess. Right. <laughs> well, look, a penny. That's about the time yeah. someone comes up and gives him a gift slap. <laughs> I'm I'm really excited to to dig more into Agent of Jinx because mm -hmm. I think that Jinx is one of Alphinius's favorites. Um, but I think that Alphinius and that's that's what I really like about Dell is you know he wears this makeup to cover his his uh, yeah. blood touch, but when he takes his his makeup off every <clears> night, 
it's like he's played this joke on the world. You know, they've paid for the entertainment of seeing Dell on stage and they don't even realize that they're being deceived into cheering and, and giving money to somebody that they would despise. So, yeah. you know, initially he was really conflicted about covering his, his blood touch, but now as he's become more in tune with the ideas of Jinx, it's this great joke that he's playing on the world. And, you know, that's, that's a pretty, that's a pretty, different way to feel triumphant about being excluded against. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. And I think that's something that the blood touch in general is starting to pull from, uh, which I think is my favorite part. My, I would say, because it's not a race, but it's a type of race, is that I really have this connection to the blood touch and this idea of being deeper into uh, the connection of the of everything, in all honesty, because the blood touch are kind of this deep connection to the Zion Thieves, um, which is one of the main reasons I got so involved with uh, the lore in the first, in the first place. So, And mm-hmm. if, if only the people of Zayate could realize that <clears throat> the Zion Thieves runs through <laughs> us all. You know, I mean, we're all part of, we're all part of Avova's creation, and we're all essentially made out of the same matter, yeah. and we're all no connected. Can. That's right. But we don't want to keep you all here. If you want to stick yes. around and come keep talking with us, we will be happy to sit and chat and have some more conversation. Um, but thank you all for coming. If you have any idea, so two last things. If you have any ideas of how you can be, you would like this stream to grow to involve the community, please send us a email directly. Um, one of my wonderful players will post it as I'm talking, uh, and that'll be in our chat. And then as well as if you are an artist of any sort and you want to contribute to us and help us out with layouts, um, humbly art, like character for portraits would be fantastic, but I do not ask anybody to do that. That is a lot of work. Um, or just in general, you want to help out in the stream in some way, shape, or form, please reach out to us as well. And we can also um, definitely get you in touch with our tech guy, or one of us will work side by side with you to help you out. Um, maps are fantastic. Uh, please message the email um, so that we can talk, especially for me, because that would oh, be. Oh, he wanted the email. Yeah, of Matt. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> so, um, as our community grows and as we continue to dive down this uh, community wide stream, I guess we would call this, um, and world, uh, and this philosophy of combining as many brains together as possible, mm-hmm. um, uh, I look forward to seeing where this goes. So, does anybody For have sure. any- final last words that they would like to impart on our wonderful community that we are growing there's our there's our email if you would like to send us a suggestion because we we love gooey cube because it's a collaborative world that we build together we want this to be a collaborative adventure that you guys get a chance to uh, influence you know and, and help us change Does it have the the underscores loophole king? They said to hit them up, James. No. Okay. No. Okay. James, I can't give him details on the maps because I have to play in the maps. So. No, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, me... we're going to a try not to metagame. Yeah. <laughs> That's the idea. Yeah. See if I can just. <laughs> Whisper. So I'm just going to whisper to have you send me. Actually, you know what? You could have just done it that way too. That makes life ten times easier. So if you have anything you need to send directly to the DM, you can use that email as well. That was up there earlier. But, but we appreciate you guys hanging out and nerding out with us tonight, uh, and letting us rattle on about lore and Zyathe. Because my goodness, we could do we could do this for like eight hours. Oh yeah, uh, easily. And, uh, because there's so much, there's so many things. I mean, we could talk about 
the the legend of fool's day and and you know the creation story and and all of this stuff but we can't because we need to <laughs> we need to go to bed another time maybe we'll do a stream one day where we all just talk about stuff yeah <laughs> what but i don't have to work tomorrow i don't have to work tomorrow either <laughs> I do. <laughs> but I do have I do have three goblins who will be up in like eh, eight hours. So you know. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Days. Godspeed. We know yeah. why some animals eat their young. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, come uh, come join us in the Gooey Cube Discord and and like add us. Uh, I'm I'm Gooey Gooey Redthorn in there and and Pam is. Gooey Pam has Bonnie. like. But Camp Pam has a lot of names. <laughs> and it's then. Uh, Bonnie. <laughs> but yeah, tag us, tag us in there, and we'll we'll talk about lore and stuff with you if you want. We enjoy it. Well, yeah. what we're at liberty to discuss anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And Did for the rest, you can tag Alphinius. <laughs> wonderfully working all sorts of random projects and uh, having fun, but uh, we loophole we're another platform to do so. So. Loophole, we're new to Discord commands and stuff, but I promise I'm going to research that yes. so that Decimus doesn't have to do it all by himself. And, uh, and we'll we'll figure those commands out and stuff. We'll yeah. also eventually <laughs> need uh, like an invite code or something that doesn't expire to put in there. Yeah. 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 We'll get it done though. We'll we'll, we'll keep working. Yep. <laughs> we're learning. But we want to. I do. Before we end, I want to thank everybody that has followed us, who has stakes around with our antics and craziness. Um, We've hit over 50 followers in less than four streams. Um, in the four streams that we had, we actually um, topped out before we actually would hit affiliate. So that is an incredible feat that we can only thank each and every one of you for. Um, so from the bottom of my heart, as well as my players, I have a feel that um, we couldn't thank you all enough for all the support you guys are giving us. One of those things. Every little bit helps. Helps so yeah, much. Every little helps. Every little bit helps. And if you want to promote to the get your DM a chair and desk, so <laughs> <laughs> subscription mode, then you guys can uh, offer that little bit of money to get a desk and chair. Uh, yes. <laughs> I just popped out the uh, Discord invite. Hey, look at that. We're learning. We did it. We'll just Had need to, to put it into it. Uh, commands on this on uh, Twitch. That's all. In the arms of an atheist. <laughs> <laughs> <I like that. laughs> Next week, karaoke with Dell. <laughs> Dell has a plus six to performance. Matt does not. <laughs> <laughs> Del failed his performance check. If you don't remember, yes. Uh, one time. Matt, Let's see. If the rest of the times I did very good. <laughs> yes. Um, but if you guys have other, uh, other, if you have ideas of other streams you'd like mm -hmm. to see our goofy selves on, um, we are happy to try to put something extra together. Um, I've got an idea of maybe doing an hour lunch time with yours truly and one or two of our players. Um, just talking about uh D, &D tips um how to be a better player how to be a better dm um breaking down some of these monsters and making them unique for your world uh we've got other talks about people coming on and reading wonderful inserts that they've written um and then just giving that platform almost like an open mic night as well mm. as uh video games meet D D, which is kind of one that i think would be fun to do where oh yeah we will <laughs> do a collaborative video game together um and uh we'll, we'll run through it together <laughs> yes. and start to break it down into D D every once in a while here and uh if it's a role play maybe we'll we'll talk it out as players mm -hmm. or just you know, there's always gauntlet <laughs> If, if we get ready to kill the stream, we can play Overcooked together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. That game is something else. It was bad. Almost caused a divorce. 
And there's games out there like Divinity and. Uh, oh yeah, I'd, I'd love to play through uh, Divinity Gate. with you guys. Baldur's Gate, yeah. So these these very heavy RPG games we can kind of dig into as mm-hmm. a group, and even if it's not always me or somebody else, I don't care really. But uh, um, as long well, as and we when James play. says lunch hour, keep in mind he's in the Eastern time zone, which yes. would be breakfast for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's so weird. I live in Central Standard Time, but my mind works in GUI Standard Time, which is Mountain Standard Time. There so we I go off. <laughs> just never know when yeah. things are happening. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So are we, as you guys in the Discord know, close down for the night, or do we want to continue our our antics? Got about uh, twenty minutes total. <laughs> it's so up I to you, James. To I don't. You're mind. the boss. Um. Like I said, we'll stick around and chat, and we'll keep this running just for fun. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, the last thing I want to do is shout out to the supporting channels that have helped us. So Uncanny Pros is ran by Gooey Lawrence, um, and they have a wonderful stream that they're actually running through the Red Rising campaign. Um, Gooey Cube does a Gooey Gurus, which are fantastic people that come in and give more tips on being good DMs and playing good games and stuff like that. Uh, Cam, if you want to speak about the other two. Oh, let's see. Trying to think of all who we have. Now I got to remember. See, put me on the spot. (laughs) Greater Mole Master (laughs) Holder Tour. We did get some, yes, from uh, Chris Perrin and uh, Heroic Journeys, which is another small publishing company. They did some mecha work. Uh, Chris has written a game for Mecca. He's actually running a stream for a game that is a combination of Mecca and Dune. Let's see, who else do we have out here? Gotta remember now. Um, A few people, Punkle Nix. Actually, these are a couple of people I know from Twitter. Nix is actually an artist himself. He does etching on glassware and other kinds of barware. All kinds of custom etching, mostly geekery stuff, so it's a lot of fun. Um, I actually have a set of drinkware from him that I use when my dice rolls fail, which is very common, but I will not share because we are trying to keep this off the FCC radar. <laughs> uh, I'll talk about Greater Mole Master Beholder Core, who uh, <laughs> is, is run by Gooey Casey, who was in the chat. I don't know if he still is, but uh, they... Sh- they stream over on YouTube, um, and they have some incredible stuff going on over there. They, uh, Casey has some players that have been playing for 20 years, and a few weeks ago they said that it was the best game they've ever played, uh, they've been a part of in their life. Um, so Casey does some really special stuff. He does a lot of stuff for Gooey Cube. Um, Alphineas is in here, and he knows that. <laughs> and he will say that Casey, Casey is a lot of the glue that binds us. Um Ooh. The goo, yeah, the goo that binds us. Uh, but if you guys want to go over and give him a look on YouTube as well, I would, I would definitely recommend that. And they're at Greater Mole Master Beholder Core. Um, yeah. And if you scroll down on our About channel, there is featured channels that will link you out to a few of these others. There, are Twitch streams as well. Yes, for sure. All right. Does anybody have any other questions? Any comments? Any last remarks? Anything else from the peanut gallery? <laughs> right. Oh, Casey, you or uh, James, you oh. mentioned that uh, we might be going by a certain tower uh, on our way into. Uh, Are we going to sail oh, by a certain yes. tower? There is a Here's the real question: depending on the direction that you guys head to. <laughs> might Here's the real question of. Whichever direction will take us by the tower. Yeah. Here's the real question. Will he be wearing a hat in this universe or not? Are you a hatter or a not hatter? I am a hatter, but he will Mad not hatter. Be, he will not be wearing a hat if you meet him. He can just say we can't stream this anymore. So <laughs> maybe no hat. Definitely no hat. Don't play the mad wizard. <laughs> 
But if we do, like I said, with our community being as wonderful as they are, um, if you do get close to that, I might see if we can squeeze a mad wizard into our game for a night. So, which would be an <laughs> honor and a blessing. At least him. wave bye to him as we go by. Yeah, exactly. As long as we don't have to go collect his winter's dance at door decorations. Oh, uh, I want to do that though. Well, knock yourself out, Dell. <laughs> there are ways to have that fun. So, uh, yeah, uh, we will definitely be exploring more of the Red Rising campaign and the different um, stories within it in ways that are not exact. So, one day. Where's Smedley? <laughs> I don't think I'll ever bring Smedley into this. Just we need it, right, right, Matt? At least Myron oh, the gosh. Ugly Troll. Well, we'll see his head. Yeah. We can sing the song. It'll be great. <laughs> And we've lost, I know like, the we've lost like 16 followers after tonight. It's okay. Oh, damn. <laughs> Canceled. Oh, nah. <laughs> we have a pool. <laughs> uh, oh, my gosh. Well, it was so much fun hanging out with everybody. Um, it's been a great time. Always a fun time hanging out with each of you. Yes, um, indeed. I think that will wrap us wrap us up for the night. Yeah, yeah. let's wrap. Because I know yeah. some of us will be talking tomorrow, too. Maybe not here, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was supposed to be a short session, but I think we had too much fun. Oh, yeah. I think we did, too. <laughs> um, you know, good night, Mad Wizard. Good night. Love you. Good night. Thank you for stopping by. <laughs> All right, now he's gone. Let's talk about this hat. We will let your <laughs> we are, uh, are going out for tonight, so <laughs> you get to give our, our, our sticky good night. And may all your adventures be sticky. Ha ha! Bye. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs>